Is your time spent in frivolous entertainment? Is your time and money been doing spent this years, so on movies and music and, street, so and food and other entertainments that have no eternal value? You will be required much because much has been given to you. There will be people in America who will make it into the kingdom, but they will be shocked when they see the people who lived in African villages and Haitian towns and other places around the globe and at different times in history who were given very little. There are people that are given very little and they do great things for Christ. Have you been, how long have you been working? You as an American in the Bible Belt of the 21st century have been given much. Aside from the people who saw Jesus perform miracles with their own eyes, if Jesus comes soon, I think the Americans of the 21st century will have the second highest condemnation of anyone in history because no one has been given more than the Americans of this century. And what do we see in the churches? Churches that reject the truth of the Bible. Churches that just want to fill up the pews and the collection plate so they soften the message. Churches that teach a watered-down gospel or no gospel at all. Churches that have become more like social clubs, tickling people's ears, strengthening the hands of sinners so that they will not turn. So what will you do today? Let me ask you. God has given each and every one of us talents and abilities, time and money and access to things so that we would use them to the glory of God and for His kingdom. God is putting together a team right now of people who are worthy to serve Him in the Millennial Kingdom and in the new heavens and new earth for all of eternity. This little 80 years on earth, this is your internship. This is your proving ground. This is your time to prove yourself to God. Jesus spoke about the servants who were given different amounts of money. Given different amounts of money and the king went away to a faraway land. And when he returned, he wanted to see what did they do with their money. And one had doubled his five, his five amounts of money. And the king said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I will put you in charge of five cities. And one that was given two sums of money, doubled it. And he said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I will put you in charge of two cities. But one wicked servant just took his talent, his money, and hid it in the ground. And that is what someone who claims to be a Christian is doing. If you are just going through your life using your time, talent, money, and passion for things that have no eternal value, no eternal consequence, just wasting your time with frivolous entertainment and other nonsense that does nothing for the cause of Christ. And when he returns and he sees what little some of the Americans have done with their talents, he will be righteously indignant and he will take away from you what he has given you and give it to those who did great things for the kingdom. Amen. Let's make, let's make a commitment today, Christian. Make a commitment today, Christian, that you are going to not even wait till tomorrow morning, start this evening using your time and your money and your talents to glorify the kingdom of God. If you claim to be a Christian and you came out here planning on getting wasted in the beer garden today, I am telling you don't pick up that booze. You need to come out here and do something to the glory of God. And tomorrow when you come out, come out doing things for the glory of God.
before it is too late. Because there's coming a day when Jesus will return. And Jesus spoke in parables about the king who returned or a master who returned when they weren't expecting him. And he will bring those wicked servants before him and say, slay my enemies right in front of me. Folks, you do not want that to be you on that day. If you claim to be a Christian, get the sin out of your life. Live holy and do, do things for the cause of Christ that will give have eternal value. Eternal value. What are you doing tonight? Shall be saved. So it could, it could be two things. Number one, it could be you persevering in your faith to the end of your life. Or it could be you persevering to the end of the age. Meaning, you go through all the tribulation, and the Muslims are cutting heads off, and the, and the professing Christians are turning their parents in, and, uh, and all kinds of backbiting and wickedness going on in the last days, kind of like it is right now. As in the days of Noah, the Bible says. So, there it is, Christian. Do you have a cup of suffering that you drink with Jesus? Well, if you're quiet, the devil promises you you will experience no suffering in this world. You'll just be blessed. And you won't experience the blessing that Jesus wants to give you when you shall be hated by all for my name's sake. So, Christian... God bless you, sinner. And no, I'm not going to stick it up my derriere. That's that's wicked. That's nasty. That's what homos do. It's, no, 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 sinner. I don't do that. Homos do that. God bless you, sinner. God bless you, sinner. You're nasty. You're disgusting. You're a filthy thing. The Bible says that's the way sinners act in the preaching, though. The sinner hates the truth. You want a donation? And a true I don't want your money. No, I don't want your money. I don't want your filthy money. I don't want your filthy money, man. Well, why you have a donation? I'm telling you the truth. Now you cussing. God bless you in Jesus' name. Man, get off of me. God bless you in Jesus' name. You are a sorry bitch. Oh, no, I'm not a female dog. You got a filthy mouth, though, sinner. I can't tell. You got a filthy mouth, sinner. <laughs> yeah, you. your wicked septic heart. Can I piss on you? No, you can't pee on me. No, your nation on the preacher is not allowed by law. Yeah, no preacher. I mean, you have yeah, freedom no God, of will. No, preacher. You're a blasphemer. Yeah, no preacher. You're guilty. Fuck you're you. guilty. God bless you. You're Fuck. guilty, guilty, you're guilty. Fuck. You're yeah. guilty, 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 guilty. Fuck. You're a sinner on your way to hell, 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 hell. Hey, hell. Hey, hell. hell. Hey, hell. hell. Another day God bless office. you. <laughs> God bless you. You. No, sinner. I don't want your filthy money. Get off of me. I don't want your filthy money. You can't drive me, sinner. You know what? Leave my sign alone. You're going to be in big trouble on Judgment Day. No, I'm not a female dog. No, I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. Why do you hate me? Because I tell you the truth about your sin. About your sin. You're in big trouble with God. Hey, well, that's the not God. You want man, that. stop hitting you want me. That. Stop hitting me, man. What's your problem? I don't want your filthy money. You can't bribe me like you bribe your pastors. You ain't shit. You can't bribe me. Oh, I'm a son. I'm an adopted son of a holy God. Hallelujah. Holy what? And you're an unholy. Holy what? You're an unholy thing. Me? You're condemned. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're on your father, the devil. He who sins is of his father. Yeah, you're of your father, the devil. I agree with you. That's why you're in big trouble. You're following the devil right to hell. You believe that liar? He is the father of all lies. And you're following him to hell. And all of you mockers, you think it's funny? You're going with him. Repent. Change your mind about your sin. You're a wicked and filthy and nasty and disgusting thing. I don't want your money. Get off of me, man. No, drunkard, take your $100 down the street. I don't want it. You're not prosperous. 
listen to me, you nasty, you're filthy all sinner. Bitch. You're all oh, real no, bitch. you better get yourself you're under control. It's a family bitch. event. You're, you're a real disgusting bitch. Get out of that street. This isn't your street. This is God's street.
That's what I'm going to do. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. How about each of you? How about each of you? I'm drawing a line in the sand, drawing a figurative line in the sand, and I'm asking each and every one of you, who will you serve? If you guys think it's better to serve the, the God of drunkenness, then by all means, head down to the beer garden and get wasted. And if you guys think it's better to serve the God of pornography, then by all means, do so. And if you think it's better to serve the false gods of, of uh, fornication and uh, drug abuse and gossipy mouth, then by all means, serve those false gods. But as for me and my house and my friend here, we will serve the Lord, the God Amen. of the Bible. Amen. And He is both good and He is severe. And this is what the modern church is lacking. Romans 11.22, one of my favorite Bible verses, says, Therefore consider the goodness and the severity of God. All night long we'll have both professing Christians and drunks and atheists and foul mouths coming up to us and telling us about the goodness of God. Everybody knows about the goodness of God, and He is good. He's loving, merciful, kind, long-suffering, but God is also severe. The Bible says our God is known by the judgment He executes. Now, do you worship the proper God of the Bible who is both good and severe? Do you understand that when He comes back on Judgment Day, He's not coming back with hugs and kisses and flowers and bottled water? Jesus is coming back in flaming fire with his mighty angels. He's taking vengeance on those who know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So my friend, do you obey God? Do you obey God? Do you obey his commands? Do you love Jesus Christ? Amen, sister. I believe you. Amen, amen. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's a whole bunch of people out here in the Bible Belt who think they can just, just say some little 20-second prayer and mark a little box on a card and put it in the collection plate. And then they think they're good to go with their sin. Let me tell you something. If you claim to be a Christian, here's a warning. God does not become blind and stupid to your sin. God sees it all. Crack horse, crack horse, they're happy too. Just because someone's happy doesn't mean they're saved or that's what's good for them. I'm sure there's a lot of sinners that are happy in their sin. No. Do, you under, do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the God of the Bible? Uh, no. And then you give me a chapter and verse where it just says God just wants us to be happy. We'll pack up and go home. Uh, okay, Romans chapter 1. Let's go to Romans chapter How about if I give you about six of them? How about that? All right. Now, can we, can we just one time go somewhere and not have to deal with homosexuality? See, if you guys, if you men and women would be godly men and women, we wouldn't have to deal with this homo stuff all the time. Uh, how about Romans chapter 1, verse 26? For this cause, God gave them up into their vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, listen up, tell your brother, oh look at that, Jerry, you want the answer. I am reading Bible and it makes you scatter. It's like turning the lights on and the cockroaches flee. Well, no matter, you bring out a Bible verse you that doesn't let you or your brother you live in sin and you scatter like cockroaches. It says, even the men, likewise the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Now, we are an equal opportunity offender. It's not just homosexuality that will put someone into hell. There's many sins. Now let's see by show of hands, when I read off a sin that applies to you, please raise your hand. Now hold on. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Now get ready to raise your hand as each sin applies to you. Neither idolater, nor adulterer, nor fornicator, nor homosexual offender, nor drunkard, nor thief, 
nor slanderer, nor swindler will inherit the kingdom of God. Now I saw a couple of hands go up. Uh, I think there's more sinners out there. Just, just a feeling I have. But let's go through them one by one. Idolaters. Where's the idolaters out there? Where are the idolaters? Alright, well, an idolater is someone who puts something above God with their time, money, and passion and talent. Do we have do we have anyone out there who spends more time, money, and passion on things like sports or uh, entertainment, movies and magazines and all, and uh, video games, then they do things for the cause of Christ. Okay, lots of idolaters here, okay. Lots of idolaters. That is an idolater putting something above Christ with your money, time, and passion. How about adulterers? Now, do we have any adulterers out there in the crowd? Any adulterers? Okay. We might have some. You might want to get ready to raise your hand because Jesus said, You have heard it said of old that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that if anyone so much as looks at a woman to lust after her, he has committed adultery in his heart. Any of you teeny boppers look with lust? Any of you teeny boppers looking with lust at anyone? Any of you teeny boppers looking with lust? If you are, you qualify as an adulterer. So neither idolater nor adulterer nor fornicator. Do we have any fornicators out there in the crowd by show of hands? Any fornicators? A fornicator is someone who's having sex outside of marriage.